Hi guys, hope you're well. Um, my name is Steve Pugh and if we don't know each other, uh, basically I have a, a business course called the Roadmap MBA and basically we're in 25 different countries around the world trying to help people uh, about their business education and careers to really give you the skills to help you grow your business. And basically what I wanted to do was I've just invested in the Insta360 uh, camera which is basically what's it? It's the Insta360 One X2 which I've ceiling mounted in my studio. And one of the things that I wanted to do was people often ask me about a studio tour to really walk you through uh, my setup. What is it? How does it work? And actually I thought this was kind of perfect that actually rather than me have to set up a hundred different camera shots to show you stuff. Um, actually I thought I would do this. This is going to get clipped and go on to uh, YouTube. So hopefully if you watch this, you can use your finger to scroll around the screen and kind of follow me around the room. Or if you're posh and you've got VR goggles or whichever with Oculus, you should actually be able to look around as well. Now, it's actually my first time doing this. Uh, so if you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. And then likewise, if you have any more questions or comments about any of the tech and stuff that you see in the room, please also kind of get in touch. Now, I, I do tech reviews and stuff as well. I'm happy to give more information, give my reviews on different stuff, including this camera itself. Um, and there you go. And then the other thing which I'm trying to do is that the audio that you'll probably hear will be from this Rode wireless mic because actually even just from my early kind of tests on the Insta One X2, the sound isn't bad, but it's not great. Um, there we go. Um, so a bit about myself, basically I'm a charter mechanical engineer, uh, I'm a management consultant, people hire me to help grow my uh, grow their kind of business uh, businesses generally. Uh, I launched the roadmap in February 2021 and with that a large part of it is the streaming scaling interaction in terms of uh, what we do, how we work with different people to help bring I guess the education to them around the world that actually I want to try and create a really good studio that people might be interested to actually watch and make it interesting uh, and that's what this is, this is what I'm going to walk you through today. Um, if you want to see the, the 2D, the traditional kind of ways that things kind of look. If you check out the rest of the channel, you'll see two main shots. One is my interview setup, which is I'll talk you through. And then the other one is my classroom setup, which is a wider shot, which is probably similar to kind of what you've got now. Uh, any questions, please shout and I'll let you know. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is my main kind of setup. Uh, what I tend to do is teach either using the TV with presentations, slideshows, uh, web pages, whichever, or the old fashioned kind of whiteboard. And with that, um, basically pens and do it the old fashioned way. I think from a teaching point of view, I always kind of, if I can go old school, people seem to kind of understand that. And uh, what you can probably see here is that I have my own kind of custom graphics and stuff, which I actually run off my laptop over there, which I'll show you. Uh, I actually have it backlit. So there's some lights. Uh, so these lights are newer. I forgot the exact model, but I'll put it in the comments. And I have, was two there, two there, two there two on the backs, so that's eight. But in the past I had some of them, they were stolen. Uh, but I think they're really excellent. So what you can probably see is that I actually backlit the wall to give it a bit of a kind of warmer glow. This is a 65 inch LG TV, it's 120 Hertz, which I also bought. You might not be able to see it, but I have my Xbox Series X just down there. And basically when the Series X came out, I needed a TV that could actually kind of handle 120 Hertz. So I also use it for gaming as well as kind of normal stuff. Uh, this whiteboard was just off a normal kind of resell it. it wasn't particularly expensive and then what I've done is I use it on a basic photography stand so I can change the height and stuff which kind of uh, you know does what it is. Um, I tell you, I'm going to walk you around the room just to show you different stuff it's the easiest way for me to kind of track it so hopefully you can follow. Um, you might be able to see some of these lamps these are actually off Amazon they were £45 each and it's all about just setting the mood and stuff for the room. Some of my degree certificates um, when I actually had the, the roadmap brand done, you'll see hopefully the R, which is quite distinctive. So that's what this is. And I had this done, the sign by Custom Neons um, oh, well, about two months ago. Uh, it did take a while to come and it's two meters high. It was quite expensive. It was about 1300 pounds. But actually I really like it because when I'm trying to build a brand and YouTube and stuff and really show the effort's gone in, a big custom sign kind of shows that, I hope. Uh, but it's also quite just a cool thing to have in the office. Um, this actually runs off power, which I plug into there. And you can change the brightness and lots of different stuff as well. It's currently at 100% because I have the room really bright to do with all the lights and stuff. But one of the things that I found, which might be interesting for any kind of video people or YouTube out there, is basically because the... Um, I think the way it's powered, so now it doesn't flicker when it's on camera, is where actually if you drop it to say 30%, 
you get kind of flickering, so it looks a bit crap, but actually 100 kind of works fine. Uh, so this is cool. Um, the plant is from Ikea. I can't remember how much it was, but it was cheap. Uh, and it's just a bit of texture, I think, is almost for a lot of the stuff. Um, for the business course, I have a lot of stock, so you'll see a lot of boxes in the room. It's part of the reason why I have an actual kind of office. So all of these are some of the uh, custom envelopes that I had made. Uh, again, when you have a business course and you really kind of want to be deemed as, you know, trying to be professional, all of the detail down to your your flyers and your packs and the whole user experience I thought was really important. And that includes the actual kind of textbooks, which I probably won't talk on today. I'll do a separate video on that. But even down to your envelopes and your postage and what you do, I think is really kind of important. Um, step ladders. So basically, as this camera is ceiling mounted, as are a lot of my other kind of lights, uh, I'm in the ceiling quite a lot. So actually, as a way to get up and down, uh, it's really useful. That actually, I'm tall enough, I'm six foot three, to be able to reach and turn those lights off without having to get on the ladder. But actually, if I want to ever install anything new, it's really useful. So actually, I keep these on hand. Uh, and something that you won't see today is my Shure SM7B microphone, which I use for my proper kind of podcast interviews, um, which I use as part of that setup, but not for this setup. So hence, I've kind of packed it away a little bit. Uh, some Christmas presents, so you can ignore those. Um, anyone that actually kind of watches this, a little competition there, if you scroll around to win a free Roadmap MBA business course, it's a pack just for 360 kind of viewers uh where do we go next okay so i'm going to go to these lights and actually if you scroll in the room you'll see three of these this is an amran 100d the middle one is also a 100d and the one at the end is an amran 200d so when i knew i wanted i've always been into my cameras and lighting and stuff and i'm always really kind of interested in it when um aperture had if you a lot of youtube people talk about the 120d which is their traditional line but it's quite expensive they launched the cheaper budget line which is the amram 100d line and basically I, I thought it was really cool i thought it was really interesting so i ordered two when they first kind of came out they're good they're not mega mega powerful but they kind of works but part of the reason why uh, i bounce them off the ceiling is that when i do my videos i try and illuminate a big space because you know, I walk around and I talk and basically it's kind of the whole room. That actually, if I go directional lighting, it's very intense, but you'll see shadows everywhere. So I wanted to find that balance. And actually we have a white ceiling as you can hopefully kind of see. It kind of works. I did also buy some newer, it was I think it was two 48 inch soft boxes, which was my original plan to light that way. But they were so big, but actually these weren't powerful enough to really power through them. So actually I, the soft boxes are just hidden around the back but actually I never end up using them I know just bounce off the ceiling and to be honest it kind of works quite well you get a nice soft light uh, because the ceiling isn't too high plus it's white and it's kind of speckles so that kind of works next you'll probably see these things all over so these are producers choice sound blankets and anyone that does video uh, you'll basically know that sound is the most important thing to kind of get right more so than the image quality in many ways and if you film in a smaller room or in any kind of space Echo is a nightmare to deal with. And then also if you have, uh, so there's a windows on that side of the room. If someone's cutting the grass outside or car alarm or whichever, it can ruin the shots. So what I wanted to do was basically, and I bought six uh, of these. These were recommended by another YouTube channel. So these are Producers Choice uh, Vocal Booth Sound Blankets. They're about 70 pounds each. I bought six. And they work like a dream because what happens is that when my voice hits them, it just kills it dead so you don't get uh, echo which is the main kind of point I have them. And then I have six of them. So the room has some weight to it. I think it just really kind of helps with the audio. And they are actually quite heavy. So what I did was off Amazon, I bought three or four of these metal frames. They were 25 pounds each. And then using cable ties, uh, basically I hold them up to the full height floor to ceiling. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then also the ones on the um, window, actually no, it's true with all of them. But the ones that are near the window are actually also there to control the light in the room because if you have any open windows you could set up all your exposures and stuff and if the sun changes and it starts beaming through it can actually be really difficult to deal with so in theory you want a room which kind of doesn't have any windows um, i have one but it's never been a problem in england so i just thought i'd talk about that okay next i'm just going to move this over so i can squeak through so I have two main cameras before I bought the 360. 
and you'll see two of them, one here and one over there. So these are Canon EOS RP mirrorless full frame cameras. This one is with a 24 to 70 f4. Actually, no, it's not. It's a 24 to 105 f4. And actually, for when I'm shooting a, a classroom session, which is quite a wide shot, you really want kind of, I actually shoot a 35, but you want a wide angle lens because actually you need to be able to fit things in so it's not kind of too cramped. Uh, lens is brilliant. It's got eye autofocus, which works a dream. And actually F4 kind of works quite well with the bright lights and to keep things in focus, that kind of works. Um, rarely recommend it. And actually with these, but I think it's true with some of the Sony's as well. Uh, you can plug it in via USB to my iMac, which is my main kind of computer, which I run everything through, which I'll talk about. But just in terms of streaming and doing classroom sessions, it works like an absolute dream. Um, one of the things that I was very keen to do uh, with, you know, trying to build a professional kind of setup is that if you watch any big TV news channel, the camera very rarely stays still. It's generally on a camera operator on a dolly or something. So basically I bought this. It's a 48 inch camera slider. Off the top of my head, I can't quite remember. Um, it's a GVM one. Um, and basically what it does, it just means that when you watch the classroom kind of sessions, there's some interest and you see a slightly different shot as it pans around within the room. Obviously 360 kind of makes that redundant, but actually I just thought it was a really nice touch that I wanted to kind of uh, build in to the setup just to kind of, you know, show that kind of effort and stuff had been made. Um, here you've got a printer. Fantastic. I wanted like a, like a professional office based printer. It works like a dream. I bought a second Mac, well no, it's my second computer. Actually, no, it's my third computer, but it's a Mac mini. I bought this um, about three months ago and I'll explain why. But basically this runs to this 43 inch uh, 4K TV, which allows me to do lots of different stuff, which is through streaming, which I'll talk about as well. Uh, and then some other stuff at the bottom, which is boxes, packing, bins, all the usual kind of stuff that you kind of see. Okay, I just move my chair out of the way. So this is basically my 27 inch iMac. It's a 2020 model. At the time, it was the best. It was the eight core processor one. I didn't go 10 core. Uh, I upgraded the RAM myself off Amazon. I think it was the last one that you could. So actually I went to 72 gigabytes of RAM, which you might think is overkill. But when you're handling lots of different programs to do lots of different stuff, for me, it was just really important to have a machine that could handle it all. So that's what I've kind of done. And the truth is actually compared to the M1 Mac mini, although this is an Intel based Mac, because of the RAM, it can just handle so much more stuff at the same time without struggling that I think it's really important to kind of do that if you can. Uh, in the future, if um, bandwidth and restream.io, which is the software that I use and stuff improves, I might upgrade again to some of the new Macs if, you know, if it works out. But actually, I think this will be more than good enough for a long time. Um, the other Amaran 100D, just in terms of streamers, if you look directly down, so basically with um, this, which is your Apple wireless kind of keyboard and mouse, the reason why that's really useful is that when you're standing presenting and you're talking to the camera, which is my main kind of normal shot, I can change scenes and I do it all on OBS, but remotely, I don't have to walk over to the computer and, you know, so you, you have so much more freedom than when you set up your different setups. Yes, you could buy a uh, Stream Deck or some of the other stuff, but actually hotkeys on OBS with the wireless keyboard kind of works a dream. Okay, going back on some of these stuff. When I bought the um, Shaw uh, SM7B microphone, I, did, I read a lot of reviews on what you need to kind of make it work. Because although the audio, audio quality is really good, it is quite quiet as a microphone, so you actually need something, which you'll probably see, basically it's called a cloud lifter. Um, it was actually quite expensive. I think that was about £180, which on top of a £400, £380 microphone, it's getting quite expensive. Uh, but I have one of those. I also have a Behringer UMC22 uh, X, not XLR, it is XLR, input, which is what that runs into, which then goes from that to USB to this. So all of the camera stuff that you see all feeds into this machine. Uh, and actually one of the things that I needed to do when I expanded my kind of setup to run multiple monitors was basically this, what was it called? Yeah, it's the CalDigit, it's a USB 4. Uh, it's one of the new ones that can handle lots of different stuff, which is for all the cameras and all the streams because I've run out of ports on this. I just thought it was worth talking about. Uh, the Rode Wireless Micro, uh, sorry, the Rode Wireless Go is what I'm talking on at the moment. 
actually works like a dream, really happy with it. Um, one of my better purchases, which I think is quite cool. The two TVs, by the way, are in the UK from Corey's. They're kind of the, the cheapest 4K TVs you could get. And the reason why I think it's really important to have separate 4K monitors is that basically when you do things like capture interview streams to then put it into OBS and do whatever, you want as high a resolution quality that you can play with. Although I only broadcast at 1080p, it works really well that I can have a full 1080p window and then capture it. In. So in this setup, I run my stream on here. Actually, I'll explain it. So this main machine on restream.io sends to my personal LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, my company Twitter, my personal Twitter, and a few of the smaller uh, things. I really wanted the ability to also broadcast to my business LinkedIn Live account at the same time, which you can't do with one system. So the reason why I bought the complete separate system is that what I now do is that when this broadcasts, I actually capture that YouTube broadcast. I bring up my own stream on this uh, and it's all wired ethernet connection. I have 200 megabits up and down, uh, which is essential. And then I capture this in my OBS and then rebroadcast it with a second Restream.io account for my business, which then goes out here in the chat. But that's why I have two machines uh, that actually I just thought would be quite interesting to kind of talk about. And it's to try and reach scale with what I'm kind of trying to do. Uh, I have a Bose sound system for uh, a lot of the kind of uh, when I have music on. But actually one thing that's quite important when you do your interviews when you get when you want really really good quality kind of audio I'll grab this so basically because you don't want to be able to hear feedback uh, which is something I just experienced early on basically I have these uh, basically earpieces that are you can find them all over Amazon I think these are about 18 pounds but they hide so you can't see them and then I have a long cable which runs into the sound system but actually just the ability to um, have better audio quality it was really important to me that I don't have the sound coming out of the iMac itself because it would feed back through the microphone. And it's just not, I would thought I would mention. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but I have a Samsung two terabyte solid state T7 fingerprint drive. That's a dream. I love that I use that everywhere when I switch between my MacBook Pro laptop, which is over there, which runs the TV, or when I'm doing client stuff on the iMac, it's a brilliant purchase, great price, no complaints. Uh, I have various backup hard drives, more sound blankets. Um, second TV, so exactly the same as that one. Uh, the Amran 200D is the more powerful version. Obviously, it's twice as powerful as the 100D. And yeah, when I try and fill the room with light when I do different stuff, it works really well. In a perfect world, I would have had three of those, but it's more expensive, long story short. Um, and actually, before I kind of point out, so the two lights which are here, um, this one, which is actually turned off, which is pointing towards me now, I use that as my hair light when I do my interviews. So with this camera, which is another Canon EOS RP, this one I actually run with a 50mm f1.8. Uh, so if you know what that means, basically that's how you blur the background, but also 50mm is quite zoomed in, so you get a really good effect. And I stand about here, face this way, talk to the camera, but actually that is to light the back of my head <clears throat> and then with more uh, newer lights, I have these either side of my face to help light me up, as well as the room lighting, just to get the effect I'm kind of going for. But, you know, I prefer to be honest about the setup. And then again, the reason why I actually wanted this monitor, as well as actually having extra stuff, when I speak to the guest, one of the things that I found really early doors when I started to do them, was that the, you, the viewer wants to feel like you're actually talking to them. So I actually now put the zoom window just above the camera. So I'm looking just above the eye line of the camera so that when I'm talking to the guests, I can make them feel involved and stuff, but still have the really nice kind of setup. Is so actually, if you look directly into the camera, for one, you can't actually see your guest, but also for the viewer, it can be quite intimidating. I don't think it's a very nice experience. So I purposely choose to put the guest kind of here. I have the restream chat, I have my questions. These are some gripper arms that I'll print out my questions for the guest, which I hang off just in case kind of things go wrong. And actually this goes into there with one of these, which I don't know if you can just see that. So that's a Camlink 4K, which basically takes the HDMI output directly into USB with the Camlink 4K into the iMac. 
is where that camera runs only on USB and that kind of works. It works for me. Uh, in terms of software, I do everything on OBS. Um, works really well, create all the different scenes, create the tickets, create all the stuff. And I, I, I love it, I can't fault it and it's free. So that's cool. Um, this is actually my charging station. So I have this table and all I do on this table is charge my bowling RGB lights, which I use to light up stuff, my headphones, that camera, um, my AirPods, everything. So basically I have about eight or 10 USB-C ports and some other stuff that I charge stuff on. And actually it's really useful when you've got a practical office just to be able to plug everything in in one place and then kind of go off and run. More boxes of the course, which I've kind of managed to pack around and kind of hide. More lights, so when I set up my interview, I kind of have these either side. And that's because I when I wear glasses, it just, it you get good lighting without reflections. So that kind of works for me. Um, more sound blankets. So actually, I'm just going to open these up. So you'll see the windows and stuff behind it. But actually, to control light and sound, you really want to kind of close those over. And they are quite heavy, but they work kind of really well. Um, sometimes it gets quite cold in this room, so I have my heater, all of the wired internet connections. So the one thing that I would really say is that whenever you want to stream and stream at a good quality, don't trust Wi-Fi, it's not strong enough. So if you can ever plug any stuff in, I recommend it. Uh, more boxes. Uh, I took a delivery of a thousand Roadman Family business courses uh, because it managed to get the price down, uh, but therefore I had to store them. So these are all, if you wonder what these are. This is my trusty 2016 MacBook Pro. I've had it for a long time, works great. It's good enough to handle kind of 1080p um, video editing and stuff. But one of the things that I found when I was trying to live stream early on is that because it can be quite processor intensive, the fan kicks in and I'd pick it up on the microphone. So actually since I upgraded to the much more powerful machine, it can just, I think when I stream in 1080p, it's only like two or three percent CPU power, but actually it's quieter, it's better quality, and actually can handle more screens and more stuff. So, very trusty laptop. Use it for a long time. Still use it every day when I go and see people. But actually, for video editing and stuff, I think there are better ways to do it. Um, bookshelf is from IKEA, uh, and actually, I just, you know, as most YouTubers do, you want stuff on there that's quite interesting. So a lot of the stuff is from Etsy. A lot of my favourite books from different authors, which is just quite cool. And then these things, I'll take this one, that I've kind of mentioned, these are the bowling RGB lights. I actually have uh, five of these. And basically you can change them any colour you want and it recycles through the kind of the colour scheme. And basically if you wanted to light your colour pink, sorry, your background pink or blue or green or whichever, they work pretty well. They do get hot when they work and they probably last for an hour, maybe a bit longer. So it's great for most things. And um, with the new brand and new color scheme, I purposely have them on white, uh, but there's lots of effects and stuff, lots of reviews on YouTube, but I think these kind of work quite well, um, which is cool, nothing else interesting there. And then yeah, back to the TV, which is one of the main kind of feature points of the room. Uh, yeah, you've got your Xbox Series X. Uh, best games that for me are Warzone. It's my main kind of one. I like a bit of Forza Horizon 5 and get onto that. Um, and it's just, it's great to have a setup which I can use for work and play kind of stuff as well. And then last but not least, underneath the camera, if you can hopefully see these, uh, basically it's these kind of stands. So these were 22 pounds each on, basically a retailer, but I think you can get them anywhere. But they're really useful for when you're stood up and presenting, either to put prize competition slips on, but actually your drinks, your pens, your stuff, so that you can present. They're out of shot, but they're height adjustable, they're very sturdy. And actually they're some of my kind of better purchases that I believe for the year. Um, and then, yeah, there's lots of other stuff as well. So for instance, the cable ties, that I, not cable ties, bungee cords that I use to hold stuff in the roof without causing kind of permanent damage, but it kind of works. Um, and what I've tried to do is almost, if I find something that I like, so for instance, I do like these newer lights, and I personally run them all just on daylight color, white color, because it's easier to kind of control. It's just the look I'm going for. I try to kind of, you know, use them and use them in different ways and stuff as well. So yeah, it's learning how to light you from the room with the big, more, more powerful lights, which light the whole room. And then these do accents and details and stuff to try and uh, kind of get depth. 
Um, my name's Steve. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you've got any questions about your own setup or what I do or the kit or whatever, please kind of reach out. Uh, and then what I'm also going to try and do is learn more about 360 video, how to get better at it, how to make the sound better. And I'll probably talk about that as well. And then likewise, some of the kind of tech reviews on different stuff. If there's anything you want me to review that you've seen, uh, just let me know. Cool. Well, have a wonderful day and uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you soon.